Monday evening, May 22nd, 2022. We are here. Wow, we are here and we are back here on another edition of the Opinionated, the Opinionated Idiot YouTube channel. I, I don't know, Laura. I need to figure out how I'm going to... Why do I always mess this up? I don't know. Because you <laughs> rehearse it so much in your head. I do. And then I think I psych myself out. Yep. But we are back here on a very rare night. Uh, we've had a lot of action today. I'm sure there's a million people live streaming right now, and everybody will kind of choose to watch what streams they want to. But listen, uh, you know, if the audience fills in, uh, by all means, if not, catch this on the replay. Uh, lots of activity today in the uh, Brian Koberger case. Ooh. And uh, before I get to that, I just want to do something really quick that I've been meaning to do. Uh, I need to bring back one of my old mods here. Let's see. I need to give this person a wrenchy wrench wrench. We got SC back as a moderator in the chat. I should have got my sound effect ready. I'll give her a cheer. So oh, good to see you. So good to see everybody here in the chat. We've had a lot of, wow, what a day, right? So, <laughs> so here's me, here's stupid me. <clears throat> you want to hear how off I am? I wake up this morning, I look down, I'm like looking at the time and I'm staring at my phone and I'm going, all right, it's getting to that time. It's getting to nine o'clock. Oh, it's nine o'clock Pacific time, which would be noon time on the East Coast. <laughs> so here's stupid me not paying attention, you know, to the time. So I wake up this morning and I've been kind of like, kind of into Twitter a little bit more, kind of monitoring Twitter and everything. So I wake up this morning, I check my Twitter, I had two notifications and I go, oh, well, that's kind of neat. So I pull up my Twitter feed and let me, uh, let me enlarge this really quick. Uh, I got, I scroll down and I look and I'm like, whoa, Kerry Rawson's <laughs> following me now. I thought that was kind of cool. And she added me to her podcast and YouTube, her uh, her folder, which was really cool. And I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of neat. And I was saying to Laura, I go, do you think I should tweet at her? Should I tweet? She's like, go ahead, tweet at her. So uh, this afternoon, I designed a little tweet. And I just said, you know, I, I'm not I'm getting used to Twitter. I don't really go on there a lot. And uh, it's I just tweeted at Kerry. I said, hey, Kerry, thanks for the follow. Open platform, my YouTube channel. If you ever want to engage about Idaho 4 and Brian Koberger. So. That was kind of cool and exciting, I guess, uh, to see her pop up. And, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm not really a big Twitter person, but for that to kind of to, to kind of come up uh, on your Twitter feed in the morning, is it's kind of cool. What do you very, think? Very <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, uh, she's a great person. Um, a lot. So like, like, she's my gosh. Really, she needs a lot of credit for putting herself out there. Yeah. Um, I respect her wholeheartedly. I I think the things she has said, amazing. Um, you know, my heart goes out to her and you know, I just think she's an amazing person. And and she obviously um is very well versed in true crime. So yeah. Yeah, I, I actually if if people don't know, I actually emailed her about two months ago and she was kind, she was very kind. She re she replied to me and I said, Hey, you know, if you ever want to come on, I got the show like the opinionated idiot. She probably looked at it and was like, What the hell is this crap? But uh, I just said, Hey, you know, if you ever want to come on and uh come hang out and just talk, you know, Idaho with us. We'd love to hear your, you know, your, your thoughts on it. Cause I know that she's been doing a lot of, you know, being on, going on a lot of channels lately. She kindly wrote back and just said, Hey, I, I would love to, but I'm in the middle of like fitting up, finishing up the, the, uh, the draft for my second book. But I just told her, you know, I, I told her, I wrote it back. She said, well, if you ever get free time, you know, come over. So Carrie, if you're watching, uh, I know I'm added to your, your list of podcasts, uh, open platform here. If you ever want to join, reach out to me, the opinionated idiot at gmail.com. We would, you know, Laura and I would love to have you over here and, and hang out with us. So, um, anyway, so Laura, what's your reaction? You know, we, um, we got some really, I guess, uh, a lot of news today. Twitter was blowing up. I was trying to catch up at work. The, the Discord was blowing up. Uh, YouTube videos being posted all over the place. I was kind of looking for video to see if they got video of Coburg actually walking in like the last time 
uh, you know, came out of the van and had his cuffs and, you know, people are, you know, the reporters, why, you know, Brian, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? And uh, I didn't see any of that video today. Did you happen to see anything like that? Uh, I did not see anything like that. They must have whisked him in from through a back entrance or something Yeah. to prevent that. Um, and then uh, Brian Enton was a beast today out there oh. in the field, tweeting, uh, giving such amazing um uh, information via Twitter, like tweeting every 30 seconds, just giving us all updates. He had some video that he dropped in and uh, he had this statement that was from the Gonzalez family that I wanted to pull up. And I thought it was just very heartfelt. And uh, if people didn't see this tweet today, it it, it went on to say that um, the family, uh, the Gonzalez family would like to thank everyone for continuing to follow this case and keep up the memory of Kaylee, Maddie, Zana and Ethan, uh, uh, memories of uh, keeping them alive. They were, uh, they were, they are what is important, not the defendant. We are thankful for that the Latok uh, County District Attorney's Office finally took the case to a grand jury and come back with an indictment. At the same time, we're disappointed that the judicial process has not been more efficient in addressing the gag order. This is just the beginning of a long journey for all families, and we are thankful for your continued support and coverage and just real quick you know before we go on here uh i saw kind of a nasty comment uh posted on my page today um uh, about that if i if i read stuff that i need to be that i should be more clear and concise when i read just to let everybody know i battle with a little bit of dyslexia and i have a little bit of a stutter when i read so um you know if you're getting if you're feeling that then you know hey listen i apologize i try to do the best i can here and this is kind of like therapy for me when i come on and do this because i really do uh, truly care about this. And, and, um, you know, I just, you know, it's something that I've battled with my whole life and it is a disorder. So, um, just to address that comment, just to let them know, uh, and, and just to let anybody else know, maybe sometimes they're like, ah, oh, you know, he really stutters a lot and, uh, has trouble reading stuff. It's just, um, you know, I guess it's just something that I have to, to address, but anyway, so I thought that was a, a very heartfelt tweet from the Gonzalez family. Uh, I don't know. Did you happen to see this today, Laura, or? I did not. Okay. Come back with an indictment. I did <clears throat> not see this. Um, Kaylee Maddie is in it. Yeah. I mean, they're keeping it classy. Love it. Yeah. I mean, they need to know that we are here for them. Right. Yeah, I 100% agree. But big shout out to Brian Enton. I, I would go yeah, through his Twitter, but there was it. there was so many tweets. Uh, I was trying to read some today. He did great coverage. And, um, you know, it was just uh, really good stuff. I, I really respect him as a journalist. I really respect his uh, opinions as well. Let me pull up a video that he talked about earlier today. He gave <coughs> um, his account of what happened in the courtroom. It's about a five minute video. We'll go through that. And we are going to pull up. There were some new documents today. Mm -hmm. If anybody didn't uh, didn't see that, we'll pull up those documents as well. Go through it. And then I do have the two videos of Brian. Um, one, the indictment video uh, when he was in the courtroom. And then I do have the gag order. We might not get through all the entire gag order video tonight uh, because it's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes long, but we'll get to maybe play through some of it. So let's pull up this video from uh, Brian and uh, we'll see what he had to say. Sounds good. More analysis on this. Let's bring in News Nation Law and Justice contributor. Jennifer oh, maybe it's not. And <laughs> it was the other video. I'm sorry. Jesse Weber. Jesse, Jennifer, thank you both. Uh, Jennifer, I'm going to start with you. Video. Obviously, no surprises here. Koberger, now with this not guilty plea. I asked Brian this question. I'll ask you the same. Did he seem different to you uh, these months later? We're seeing him for the first time since January. Physically, no. Maybe his hair was a bit longer. It wasn't the physicalness that was different. What was different was that he stood up and really refused to give a uh, plea. And I found that uh, to be unusual. I know it's his prerogative. I know it's his right. But I, I saw it as a sign of defiance, Nicole. And Jesse, I want to talk to you about that. You're a lawyer. Uh, what are your thoughts on Koberger not entering a plea today? Because that certainly was his choice uh, to, to stay silent and not enter that plea. So let's be clear, right? There's no legal difference, no legal impact that's going to be different between him 
pleading not guilty or basically standing silent and the not guilty plea being entered on his behalf. What I think this could be, though, is him opening himself to negotiations. Because right wow. now, what he's saying is, I'm not telling you one way or another, guilty, not guilty. What do you think, Laura? You agree? I see you shaking your head. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't think his reason for not pleading. Well, I have two thoughts. Yeah, let's hear. I don't really want to get ahead of everything, but I believe that it could be his total defiance of basically saying, I'm not going to say a word. Him trying to make the judge say that he is not guilty as kind of like a, I don't know, like a ha ha, I got you to say that. Sure. Or he could be planning for um, some type of incapacity plea to say like a pretrial motion that he is um, doesn't have the mental capacity to stand trial. That's what I'm afraid of um, because of the visual snow, depression, feeling alone. The things we spoke about last night, was it? Yeah. yeah. Things we spoke about last night. I mean, it's all over the media. Um, will he be going for this this plea? I, I don't know. I don't know. So we can talk a little bit about there. So Heather thinks uh, says uh, he didn't plea so we could appeal things down the road. Ann Taylor uh, definitely advised that. Yeah, I'm sure she probably did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that um, uh, what was I going to say? I think this may be, you know, some of the options I'm agreeing with you here, some of the options that his lawyer probably put on the table. I think now, uh, I don't know. This this to me seems that this is shifting in this case. I think that they're realizing that uh, maybe this evidence may back him up against the wall. Uh, and again, you know, we, we want to make sure that I make this statement here. We are not legal experts. We're not scholars. We're not lawyers. We're, we're making, we're just basing opinions off information that's put out there into the public. Um, Brian Koberger is 100% uh, innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. He is now entering that judicial process and will start his trial on October 2nd uh, at 8.30 in the morning, I believe. Right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But um, I think this could be some something like that, um, that maybe they're starting to see the totality of everything that's going on. I, I'll be honest with you, the first you know, the, the couple of minutes of footage that I got to watch at work today, and I'm not sure if the chat's going to agree with me or you may not agree with me. This is just my opinion. I think he looked a little tired, a little defeated. I'm sure he probably didn't sleep well last night, knowing that this is kind of the, the big, you know, the big day, if you want to say that. Uh, it could be some of that. But I think that he looked a little bit uh, noticeably thinner uh, to me. Uh, it looked a little bit more gaunt. I guess that's what five months and probably solitary confinement and who knows what it does to people 50 years down the line. Um, but to me, it looked like a little defeated today. Uh, he, and we'll see this in the courtroom video. He did that kind of weird thing and then just turns it off really quick. It comes on really quick and then off really quick. And, and we actually talked about that last night that's right. uh, with his uh, the sales project. Yes, his lab partner to sales. He said he could turn it on and off at the stop of a dime. So I'm I'm not sure where where this is going right now. I mean, it could go a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. um, his um, his standing in mute. Um, it, it could make it a little easier by him pleading not. No contest. Not so I heard something that if. He was to, I don't know if you can, can you plea no contest in a, in a, not, in a no, there was no, there was no, no contest Got or it. no, no low contender. That's uh, it. The, 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 the no, no low contender. No low contender. Right. And I thought no that, contest, essentially. Yeah, right. And I thought that the reason that they're doing that is to escape the felony charge, essentially. Oh, well, there's uh, no escaping. Yeah. Any felonies right now. Um, but yeah, there's, there is no, no insanity plea um um you can't plead insanity in idaho however there is reduced capacity right. um which is not insanity it basically is somebody that is not mentally capable of understanding it, it doesn't it's a little different but there's a there's a reduced capacity thing that it's a different type of motion but yeah there's no no insanity so they could 
possibly go another way. We'll have to wait and see because it seems like every time we, it's like been a road trip since November, <coughs> we get so on the road, road and then we get a detour and then we right. have to make a left and then we have to make a right. Um, so yeah, buckle up. That's just so, uh, Devil Doll said uh, the PF pulled a fast one on the DF with the grand jury and, and, and called it, and and called it as quick as she could. Is she not following the quickest protocol for them to call DM and BF? I think it's just basically, let's just get this trial on the road. Like, I think I go back to my original statement when we first started talking about this. You know, if you look at the, like we said, and we, I always say this, go and read those document dumps. You'll see what's going on between both sides, the defense and the, and the, the prosecution. And, they, and you know, we've, we've read a lot of those documents on here. It seemed like going into the preliminary hearing, there was this ton of back and forth, this tennis match. And essentially what happened was the prosecution came out and said, here, here is the totality of evidence that we have. Here are the things that we're putting in front of you. You're asking for all these things and we've given it to you. Why? You know, here it is. Let's put all our cards on the table now and let's just do this thing. That's how I perceived it. Um, and I think uh, that's why this just got pushed to a grand jury. I mean, uh, there's a lot of evidence in this case. Uh, 51 terabytes is a lot of, a lot of information. Oh, yeah. And let's just say this, maybe, maybe uh, Taylor and going back to this to push this fast enough, maybe she knows that it's going to take umpteen years to go through all and sort all this information. And if the prosecution's maybe not ready on some things and they get to trial and they're ahead of the prosecution, this will work in the defense's uh, favor. That's possible. Maybe some things that they don't explore, you know? Yeah. I mean, I I believe that Brian Koberger <laughs> is probably examining his entire case file. So whatever he has, he's examining it. So, yeah. An Alfred plea. Um, well, you have to be convicted first. Yes. And then it takes many, many years, I think, to yeah. get rid of Alfred. There's actually two famous cases that you can oh. watch. One, if you go on Netflix, it's a great case on there called The Staircase. Oh, and brilliant. then you can also go back to the West Memphis Three because oh. they pled Alf Alfred as well, as well. And that took them almost 20 years to get into Alfred. And it took, uh, and I'm, excuse me, I forget the gentleman's name on The Staircase. Uh, uh, Michael, Michael Peterson. Mike. Michael Peterson. Michael Peterson. Yeah, it took him almost like fifteen or Something twelve like years. It was, in yeah. the, it was like yeah, twelve to fifteen or so years. I I just watched that both on Netflix and HBO Max, the dramatization of it, and wow, that was a crazy case. If you have not watched those two, yeah. definitely tune in. It's worth it. Um, it gives you. I mean, it, it was a crazy theory. Crazy theory with an owl. And I'm thinking, how, how, or should I say who? Um, anyway, um, definitely check it out. If you love, I mean, obviously, if you love this stuff, you're here. Right. Um, worth the watch. Both of them, both Netflix, both HBO Max. And he did take an Alfred plea only because he had served so much time. He just was tired. And mm -hmm. well, he's almost 79 years old or 78 he, years he's old. in his 70s. And he just wanted to be out and with his family and his family um believed he was innocent except for the the one stepdaughter and he he was just sick of being in jail and he made it adamant that he was not guilty um and that is not why he took the alfred plea he took it to get out of jail so low 12 said good point brian danielle did some observations today she said look how far the male lawyer sat from bk i'll be honest with you uh, I had to do so much preparing and I'm glad this person brought the owl theory up because I want to talk about that really quick. Uh, I, I haven't watched the whole full video, so I'm very excited to actually experience that today with all of you here uh, because I did. I worked very long hours. Heather said that it could be delayed again. I think it probably will. I think there'll probably be some motions. I think it's going to take a while. Uh, and then uh, uh, and I'm, forgive me if I say this name wrong. Is it Abavale? <laughs> Abavia. Um, Abelia. Okay, thank you. Uh, the owl theory on the staircase is wild and strange story. I'm going to be a crazy person here. I think it's 
possible. I, I do really too. do. I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but I just don't. I don't feel that Peterson did it. I, I just I don't see it. And the owl theory is pretty plausible, knowing Those that people have been attacked in that area by little tiny feathers they found, and yeah. the clumps of her hair, and the trident shapes marks across her skull. Her claw. Um, yeah, it, it it's crazy, but it's plausible and. Yes, I mean it, it. Life is strange, and I, yeah, it's crazy, but definitely it's it's worth the watch. All right, let's go back to this video, uh, and we'll try to. Whoa, whoa, where'd Laura go? Where's Laura? Laura, where are I you? Just, you know that doesn't help my fear of birds either. So, <laughs> all right, let's play this out. Maybe he is trying to open himself up to favorable negotiation plea, because what we still don't know is if prosecutors are going to go forward with the death penalty. All the fingers we've seen, all the points seem to be headed toward that direction. This seems to be the kind of case. So if he wants to a later say, hey, listen, I will agree to plead guilty if you take the death penalty off the table. If I hear him saying, I didn't even enter a not guilty plea. I'm not trying to fight this. I'm not having my attorney go on media or saying anything, even though she wouldn't be permitted to because of the gag order. By saying, you know, not one way or the <laughs> other, we do not know where he stands. And maybe he doesn't want to jeopardize any kind of right he would have to a potential deal down the road if we get to that. Because while it seems like a short time between now and October when this trial date is set, it's also an eternity. And so much can happen mm -hmm. between now and then. Well, Jesse, I wanted to ask you about this later. I'll ask you now, though. Uh, it, it does seem like a long time in a way. And then in another way, as you said, it, it doesn't seem that long. October is not that far. Do you think the trial will actually start in October? There's so much evidence, so many things to dig through here. Technically, it could. I don't think it will. I think it's going to get pushed back. There are so many things that we're trying to understand with this case. And what's difficult is there's a gag order. But clearly, when you're reading the tea leaves, the defense believes they have a case. They seem ready to go to trial. They wanted a six-week trial. They're ready to go. Um, and it seems to me that there are things that are happening behind the scenes with, we don't know all the evidence the prosecution has. That's one of the things why this was a secret grand jury indictment as opposed to a preliminary hearing. And when you have more evidence, when you have these kinds of issues, it was only two months back, I was talking to Brian Enton about this, about there was that whole exculpatory evidence issue and whether or not one of the officers involved in this investigation did something improper, it creates the potential to delay the case. So I wouldn't be surprised in a high profile case like this, we don't actually see this go to trial in October, but maybe push back maybe to 2024. Yeah, we'll certainly uh, see what happens here, Jesse. J Jennifer, I'll quick kick it back to you now. News Nation, uh, the first to report Koberger was being looked at for a burglary in the area involving a female colleague what does that tell you about him as a suspected criminal? Well, I think anytime you see uh, minor crimes committed before a major crime, it shows that it was a progression leading up to actually possibly, again, if he's guilty, this horrific event. Typically, you don't go from A to Z. There's a lot of points in between. And so a burglary prior would explain a lot. All right, and Jesse, would any of that be admissible in this case, in this trial? Well, if I was a defense attorney, I would say none of it should come in, that it's highly prejudicial, that it's not relevant to the case at hand. But of course, we know that certain states have the ability to introduce evidence that on the face of it might not look relevant, but if it shows a pattern of behavior, it might come in. I think that if this is true and he actually did this, um, and by the way, he hasn't been found guilty of it, so it's not like it can come, you know, that the jury would necessarily need to know this. He's not being tried for that. Um, I, I wonder if it'll actually make it relevant. I think for us, as we're trying to understand a little bit more about Brian Koberger and who he is and maybe why he allegedly did what he did, it's just more of interest. It's interesting. Well, let's, let's go back and pause that really quick. And then we can read through that. Uh, so let me acknowledge this uh, YouTube membership. Danielle's becoming a new member of the channel. Danielle, thank you so much um, for becoming a new uh, member of the channel. I, I really appreciate your support. All right, let's read this really quick. So the prosecution scorecard found at Koberger's residence. One disposable black glove, receipts from Walmart and Marshalls, a dust bag, a dust container vacuum, uh, the News Nation thing here. Something about a fire, the Fire Stick computer tower. Uh, 
an item with a dark red spot, two pieces of uncased pillows with reddish brown stains, mattress covers, possible hair strains, one possible animal strand. Okay. Allegedly did what he did. It's just more of interest. It's interesting for us to figure out, but in terms of it being used at an actual trial, I'm not entirely sure it's actually going to come into evidence. All right. And Jennifer, one last question for you really quickly. We know the house. The house at this point uh, is boarded up. There have been uh, a lot of back and forth about what will ultimately happen to it, whether it will be torn down, whether it will not. Do you think it's possible we could see jurors uh, make a trip out to that house? At this point, uh, boarded up certainly would have changed uh, significantly from when the crimes occurred. I think they should be able to go for both the defense and the prosecution reasons. I just think it's the fair thing to do. I think these jurors need to see how close the proximity of all these floors are, of the rooms. They need to get a feel for what the sound would be like there. I think it would be remiss not to let the jurors go in there. Jennifer Koffendoffer, Jesse Weber, we appreciate your time. Thank you. I do agree. I think that they should see the house. Absolutely. I think they should see the house. And I think that's the, been the battle right now to destroy it. I think it's still very, very important to this investigation. Um, and the jury definitely should, you know, go there and see a trip to see how close all that was, how close it was to walk up and down those stairs, how far apart all those bedrooms were, how far apart that bedroom, that Zana's bedroom to, to Dylan's bedroom in that walk and how far it was from how, how it would be standing in that door and looking down that hallway, seeing someone walking towards you and then walking out that sliding glass door. I think that's extremely, extremely important. Um, so let's do this really quick. I have a, another quick uh, video, five minutes Banfield, then we'll pull up the legal documents. We'll go through some of those and then we'll play um, Brian Koberger's hearing today in court. All right, this is from uh, Banfield. And let's play the news that. last week about Koberger's indictment by that grand jury. Did anything surprise you today mm -hmm. in the courtroom? I mean, what did you take away from the fact that Koberger did not speak, did not enter a plea himself? Yeah, I'm really scratching my head on this one, uh, Nicole. I, it's not like I haven't seen it before, right? I've seen plenty of judges having to enter a plea for a defendant in front of them who refuses to speak, perhaps doesn't have counsel present, all sorts of reasons why a judge would do that. But it's very rare to see somebody answer very definitively all the questions being asked of him or her, the way Brian Koberger did, almost in a, in a loud, defiant voice. Yes, I do, he answered to the very first question. So I was just sort of flummoxed by the notion that when it came time for the most important part of this hearing, which was to enter a plea, <clears throat> instantly Ann Taylor stood up. This was planned because there didn't seem to be a beat. There didn't seem to be confusion. Uh, she didn't have to wait for him not to answer to stand up. She stood up right away and said, uh, we stand in silence, which was the cue to the judge to enter a plea for him. I don't know what this strategy is. I'm still kind of researching Idaho law to see if there's something there, but I can't see it personally. All right, so Ashley, let's talk about the trial date here. Uh, now knowing that this trial will begin in October, uh, right now we're on the cusp of June here. Do you feel like that's a delay? Uh, do you think this is actually happening sooner than you would expect? Because we also know how the, the criminal system, the court system, can take a long time sometimes. Sure, yeah. I mean, I've covered cases, Nicole, where uh, trials <clears throat> didn't happen for over a decade. Imagine that. Imagine being in pre-trial custody for a decade. There are all sorts of reasons why. This is not gonna be that one. Um, that also very much surprised me. I had to go uh, rewind so that I didn't mishear that this wasn't a hearing they were scheduling as opposed to a trial. I'm going to go on the record saying I don't think we're going to have a trial in October. I think this this was sort of a let's put it on the record for a speedy trial because <laughs> at this point maybe Ann Taylor doesn't believe that the state has everything that it needs uh, for a conviction beyond a reasonable doubt. I, from what we just know outside the gag order, let alone all the material inside the gag order that we don't know about, I think they have plenty. Um, but a speedy trial is a strategy. Lori Vallow employed it. She said speedy. That's not video from him today. That's old video. 
trial. I dare you. I dare you, prosecutors, to take me to trial within the speedy trial uh, window, because I don't think you have the goods. And I think it's going to take you too long to get the goods or get the testing or get the experts or get the witnesses. It didn't work out uh, for Lori Vallow at all. Six guilties across the board. For Brian Koberger, I think there's going to be so many issues of discovery, given the fact that there's 51 terabytes. <laughs> Ask me later how much that is. It's like <laughs> tens of thousands of feature-length movies. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of discovery issues, and I think that you will probably see delays in that date. But if you don't, man, oh, man, are they taking a huge gamble on a death penalty eligible trial and conviction where, guess what? Um, you know, the, the, the method of execution in that state could be, uh, you know, shooting. Right. <laughs> so squad, yeah. this is a big, big gamble. Yeah. So, Ashley, you, you know, you, you spent a lot of time on this case. You've talked to a lot of experts. Do you think Koberger believes he can get off? I don't know this guy. Um, and I sure wish I could get inside that mind. I know plenty of people like him uh, who have such hubris that they believe they are smarter than everyone. Um, in this particular case, no idea if this is Brian Koberger calling the shots and telling Ann Taylor what he wants, or Ann Taylor telling Brian Koberger, look, I have a strategy, and at this point, the best strategy might just be speedy trial, or once we figure out as we get closer to speedy trial date, Slow plea thing. bargain. No. Yep. Um, but I do think that this young man um, as a criminal justice uh, doctoral um, you know, <laughs> wannabe, I think he might have a few things to say about his, um, his particular predicament. But let's be really clear. The program that he was studying, criminal justice, is not law. Mm. Criminal justice is not a law degree. Mm. And when you're dealing with death penalty eligible crimes, four of them, I may add, um, you would want a law degree before you would even enter a peep about what to do in your defense. Because there's an old expression, a man who has himself for a lawyer uh, has a fool for a client. You can reverse that. A man who has himself for a client has a fool for a lawyer. For a lawyer right? Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com. What do you think, Laura? Um, 51 terabytes is a lot. That, that is... I mean, the typical DVD holds about 4.7 gigs, so that would be 47,000 or more movies <laughs> on DVD. Like how? What is all this? I, I don't know how there's that much data. And, and data is one of my backgrounds, so I, I can't... How, how, how you have that many thousands of gigabytes so that would be fifty-one thousand gigabytes back in 1998 the typical pc that you would buy i remember my first pc i think it had four gigabytes yeah i mean wow i mean i can't fathom this how much i, I can't fathom how much they have i, I can't even i don't i i think this is definitely not going to be an easy trial for either side. There's going to be a lot of complexities in this trial. Um, there could be a possibility this guy gets off if he did do it. No? I mean, you don't have to agree with me. I'm up for a healthy debate. <laughs> I... I still think the evidence is strong. I I don't know if the prosecution will go for a plea bargain. I'm saying, is the jury going to see it that way? I mean, we know how people feel about this. It's a very emotional trial. It's a very emotional case. And a lot of people, the consensus of what I see out there, a lot of people think this guy is innocent. I, I, don't, I don't see it. The way that I look at and interpret the evidence, I just don't see it. That's my opinion. But there are a lot of people out there, even people in the chat that we don't agree with. You know, they could give good valid points on their side, too. And that's OK. You know, that's why we do this. We have public discourse to talk about these things. But I, 
I'm wondering how a jury, you know, maybe a jury just really looks at this and sees, you know, understands the brutalness of this, the nature of this, you know, and you get a really uh, strong jury that goes in and, and really reads through and sifts this. And that's why I look at like the Murdoch jury. They're very particular going in and really looking at this case, studying it and taking lots of notes and going back and not coming out until they had, you know, a, a, an all in verdict. So it, it's really it's going to be a very interesting case when it gets into the courtroom. Uh, absolutely. I just did some calculations here. Sure. Let me pull them up. So this 51 terabytes equates to approximately 25,500 hours yeah. of video. So then let's say we have. I got it. I have the, um, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. It's three years it. worth of video. Yeah. Consistently. Consistently. The That's like the Truman show. Fuck is all that. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, is all that? I, I can't, I'm having a hard time really. I mean, we heard about this a while ago, but I'm really thinking about this is a lot. Um, well, what you know, now it's like, well, what is it? You know, what is this? What's on there? What is what taking up this much what yeah. on this? I mean, and they do have how many FBI agents on this and and crime lab professional, you know, professionals that, that do data forensics and everything. So guaranteed. Guaranteed they're on this. So I, I don't necessarily know if the prosecution can't make the speedy trial and the same thing happens in Lori Vallow. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that was Idaho as well. Mm -hmm. um, different jurisdiction, but I mean, you know, Idaho won, Lori Vallow zero. So right. let's see what happens. Yeah, I got I got it right here. Let's pull this up real quick and then we'll get into the legal documents. But let me show this here. So I asked Google you know, what is 51 terabytes? It equals out to 51,000 gigabytes. And it says uh, one is one gigabyte of storage a lot. One terabyte gives you an, an option of storing roughly 250,000 photos taken with a 12 megapixel camera or 250 movies or 500 hours of HD video or 6.5 million document pages. Did, uh, did he have a camera? Was he taking yeah. pictures of people? What the hell, man? Doing recon or something? And I, I found this kind of erotic. Then iron, ironic, erotic, <laughs> ironic, <laughs> Freudian slip. Because uh, you were just saying, was he taking, was he taking videos and pictures? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're cracking up. I find it ironic that down below, look, it's Dropbox is the next thing. And it's funny that that's one of the things that gets subpoenaed oh. and uh, got, got a search warrant in this, uh, in this, uh, in the evidence. So look at my, my face is red. <laughs> uh, Dropbox um, basic only offers two gigabytes of storage space for free. Right. Um. Yeah, so he maybe he was uh, maybe he had um, it looks like a family account um, or a business account with Dropbox to get that much storage space. But I, I highly doubt it's like a family thing. Right. All right. What? Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm good. I was going to say what uh, what legal document do you want me to pull up? There's a document dump today. If everybody wow. doesn't know, uh, let me pull up the documents and uh, the motion. Do Motion requesting release of grand jury materials under qualified protective order. Okay, hang on one second. If Go anybody up. doesn't have this, save that link to your browser. That's where all the document dumps come through. And I would advise checking it like every Monday and Friday. It's usually when we get a lot of the documents in this case. There's going to be a ton more that come out as well, too, because now we're moving through the court process and things are going to be coming a lot uh, faster. Just real quick, if you haven't already, please make sure to go down and smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you enjoy this content, uh, turn on all your bell notifications. I go live tonight's a little off night, uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 8 30 PM Eastern standard time. We've been pushing to about nine. Um, if you want to become a member, you can get on there, hit the join button and support the uh, channel on a monthly basis. Once you join, it gets you in a discord chat group and come in, chat with us, hang out, have all that fun stuff. So, uh, all right, let me pull up the documents here. So I'm sorry. What, what is the one that you wanted to see? 
Motion yeah. requesting release of grand jury materials under qualified protective order. Okay. I'm going to pull that one up. Fourth one from the bottom. Yep. I got it. All right. So you want to explain this one? This is as we expected. Uh, okay. Ann Taylor filed <laughs> this motion basically stating that she wants the grand jury materials to be disclosed pursuant to a qualified protective order. All the materials to be disclosed only to Brian Koberger and his legal counsel. Any expert witnesses, uh, personnel of the court and court reporters. She wants all the materials that shall be used for litigation purposes and the production of materials shall not constitute a waiver of any privilege or their claim or right of withholding or, or confidentiality by which Brian Koberger may have. So that is just as expected. Them saying they want the grand jury information. Okay. So uh, we go down here. So any expert witnesses? Okay. Kind of what you just went into investigative consultant yeah. Brian Koberger's defense team, Latow County prosecuting attorney office, whom soon access materials necessary to perform the duty with respect to this case. Any personal court uh, reporters retained to record and transcribe testimony cases. The materials and any information contained therein shall be used only for the purpose of litigation and action. Yeah, this is pretty standard. Seems like a pretty standard document that would be very filed. standard. Yeah. Very standard. So we have that document there. Um, any of the other ones that were of importance? Um, we can just go through all four quickly. They're, okay. they're pretty quick and easy. All right. Uh, the next one is the motion to enlarge time to file okay. three child motions. All right. Let me pull that up there. And again, Laura and I are not legal experts. I mean, we we get kind of the interpretation of the documents. It, it's not that hard to figure out too much of what's going on. If you just if you don't understand some of the verbiage in there, just pop it into Google. That'll help you out, help you read through some of this stuff. And of course, you can always join these streams. We go through them. And I would say some reputable channels too. Emily D. Baker and, of course, everybody's most handsome hunk that everybody loves. The uh, lawyer the, the you lawyer know. You know uh, Peter Tragos. Which, anyway, Peter, if you're watching, you can always come over and hang out on my channel, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this this one here is a motion to enlarge time uh, to file pretrial motions and mem uh, in uh, memorandum in support. So if you want to go through this one here, yeah. Laura. Really, this one <laughs> just says it's Ann Taylor filing a motion that they want additional time to file pretrial motions. Cool. So they're, me... yep, they're, that's all they're saying. Cool. Let me get to the super chat really quick, and then we'll keep reading through these documents. I got a, a, a 199 super chat from SC. She says, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your super chat, my new my new mod, my new wrench. Welcome back to the, uh, the wrenches. And then we have uh, procedural history. Um, it says the indictment for the above entitled manner was filed on May 16, 2023. Counsel for the defendant filed... It's initial request for discovery on January 10th, 2023. Counsel for the defendant file a motion to make available record of all proceedings of the grand jury on May 19, 2023. Uh, based on the amount of time it will likely take to receive and review all grand jury materials for this manner, counsel will need additional time to file pretrial motions pursuant to Idaho Crime Rule 12. So essentially there's asking for more time more time more time okay um nothing more that we really need to read through here that's no it's, okay. it's all pretty okay all right pretty standard legal document i would say uh yeah. next one motion to record make okay. available the re record of all proceedings of the grand jury um this is just <coughs> ann taylor Council specifically requesting the following be included in the record. Um, she wants everything. Right. Um, the only thing that stuck out for me. Sure. Um, a, a number three on the second page, it says a copy of any and all order to summons jurors and notice of hearing. So she wants to know when the jurors were summoned she wants to know 
a transcript of the initial seating of the grand jury, which ultimately heard evidence in the case against the defendant. The transcript should include, but not limited to, a list of pers uh, prospective jury pool, administration of the oath of, per of prospective grand jurors. You got this one. Voir dire. Voir dire. Voir -dire. I, was, I was close. And we already talked about what that is. Yes, it's jury. It's questioning of the potential jurors. Yeah. The prospective grand jurors by the prosecution and the court and the questionnaires of instructions given to the uh, pr prospective grand jurors, as well as a list of all persons present. That just she's just trying to get everything, um, make sure everything was done correctly in a grand jury, which is what a typical defense would do to try to poke holes through anything. Right. Um, she wants the verbatim <coughs> transcript of everything. Where's the. Oh, number seven. She wants a list of the names of the grand jurors who heard the evidence against the defendant. But the prosecution already sealed this. Mm. So that's interesting. She wants the name of the grand jurors, but they had already sealed it. If you remember, these are all dated Friday, but these were just released, I believe, today. Um, where's the other one that I saw that? Real quick. Uh, Essie says, my sinus infection and I are taking ourselves to bed since the little one is in bed early. Good chat. Good show tonight. Goodbye, everyone. Essie, have a great night. Thank you for your super yes. chat. Thanks for popping in. Replay crew, we'll see you over there. And uh, of course, suck. we'll be back tomorrow night. We're going to do a 5,000 subscriber celebration. I have no idea what I'm going to do for that, but I'm going to figure something out. I'm going to give something away. I'm going to give something away. So everybody's going to want to hang out for that. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Back to Well, you're business. good. You're good. I'm just scrolling through to find... Um, Number of grand jurors in presence of uh, quorum per Idaho Rule 12, uh, 6A. We talked about a lot of this, didn't we? Yeah, this is all standard. Just some things. What um, are, is any questions asked of any witnesses? So they want to know, of obviously, yeah, yeah. what was asked of the witnesses. She's trying to dot her I's and cross all of her T's. Oh, yeah, because if she can catch something, I mean, they're... It could be a motion and this is it. it gets dismissed. She also wants to know the term of service of the grand jury because grand jurors are typically um, <clears throat> charged with serving on multiple grand juries for a specified period of time. Mm. I'm just looking through here. Any return indictment in this case per Idaho criminal rule 63D, a list of a list of the vote of grand jurors for each charge per Idaho. Wow. So he wants to know the way the voting went mm -hmm. and then all documentations regarding a return of no bill pursuant to Idaho uh, criminal rule six, five dash E. So that, yeah, that one is just her being very, very, being specific. very thorough, which if you have a good lawyer, they should be, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. And then the last document, we can just go to that. That one's kind of the fun one, in my opinion. That's the order in a large time? Yes. Your trial motions? Okay. Yes, we got the new uh, John Judge signing off that the defense counsel has 30 days from the receipt of the grand jury materials <laughs> to file any pre-trial motions. motions. So they will have until June 18th to file any pre-trial motions. That's mm. it. So by June 18th, we will be privy to these. Hmm. Change of venue could come into that. What, what uh, do you think the what do you think the the percentage that they move this out of later? Fifty fifty. I I can't. I mean, they'd have to grant it. I mean, this judge doesn't even know how to pronounce the victims' names properly, so it's not like he's overly familiar with this. Hmm. So, I mean, what about the lay people of Lataw County? See what I did there? Mm, yes. I think I have a drum sound. Hang on. I think oh, we do. Oh. Let me see. Do you hear it? it? Yes, I heard it. So the lay people of Lataw County... Um, wouldn't necessarily um, be as well versed probably in this as the judge unless I, I don't know they wouldn't want to move it north to Coeur the first district because that is where 
uh, Maggie <coughs> and uh, Kaylee were from. So moving it north to Coeur d'Alene, bad idea. South to Boise. I mean, that's a possibility, moving it south to Boise. They obviously oh, would man, have... that'd be crazy, huh? You have... You had you have Vallo, they're in Boise, right? That trial's in Boise. And now they take on this other huge monster of a case. I mean, wow. uh, but would, as you know, would the defense, would the defense want to move it to Boise, given mm -hmm. that we just had the Lori Vallow trial? So there's, there's a lot of moving parts to this. I, I mean, definitely doesn't want to go north to the, to the district one, I believe it is with Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint and all. Definitely not. That would, yeah, Boise. I mean, I would think if it gets moved, it would go to Boise. It's, so it's a more diverse area. Mm. People aren't necessarily hooked into the Moscow and the the northern part of Idaho because that part of Idaho is kind of it's it's <laughs> like Washington and, and Montana are right yeah. there. Like it's it's not a big area. It's just a little stove fight that goes up. So if if it's gonna get change of venue, I would put my stamp. Right there, boom, Boise. So I did a chat, I did a poll. I saw that. Uh, yeah, 64 votes. Will BK take a plea bargain or go to trial? Right now, 19% think a plea bargain, 81% say go to trial. All right, let's pull up this video. <clears throat> I have not seen it. The courtroom video of Brian Koberger today at his hearing being indicted. I've been anxious to watch this all day. I promise I have not watched this, so you're going to get my natural reaction to this video. Um, I've seen, obviously, some little clips and news things, but I have not seen the full thing. It's about a 15-minute video. Uh, we'll get through that. <clears throat> then I may pay a little bit of the gag. Uh, I don't want to be on too, too late tonight. Maybe we'll come back and do the full tomorrow during the 5,000 celebration. But I told Laura, I said, we'll only go like an hour tonight, and I appreciate it. We've both been very burnt out. We've done a lot, and I know Laura's been super, super busy. She's getting ready to finalize some things soon. They have some more free time. And yes. um, so all good stuff there. All right. I am. Whew, I am. Uh, I'm nervous. I want to see this. I haven't seen him. So let's do this. have some people on Zoom here too. So. Again, I've pointed this out before, and, and maybe I'm crazy. And oh, why are you stop the video? Stop stopping the video. You always stop the video. Because I'm giving commentary to my chat room. <laughs> I've always noticed before, he is very aware of where those cameras are. He peeked over his shoulder and looked at that camera again. He knows where the cameras are. Um, he gave her a fake smile too. He did. That kind of weird turn on smile and then it just goes pssst, dead so she uh, must have had a rough night it looks like she had her hair pulled back <laughs> um she has some bumps in her hair so yeah. she must be she she doesn't look as um i i just noticed little things like that um oh well, it's, i'm sure it's extremely stressful for i mean you have you have a person that's been accused of a quadruple homicide and a burglary you have families now in that courtroom that are facing this man that is accused of murdering their children. Uh, the obviously the area around in and around that courtroom that in Leta has been on edge. You know, this has been a big media buildup. This has been a big event. This has now turned global news. 
I'm sure Ann Taylor's probably stressed out. I'm sure she's going through a lot of emotion. We obviously know Brian Koberger is. And then you have on top of that, the emotions of the family. And this judge now is on this, you know, I'm sure they get probably a little butterflies in these types of things too. It's funny. And, and maybe this might be a wrong comparison, but uh, I like Metallica. Great band. Always loved them my entire life. And I watched uh, just a recent video with them and they're going out, I believe, on a year or two year tour. And they said to this day, and some of them are in their late 50s now, like 55 and older, they still to this day get butterflies when they, before they go on stage. And I find that just amazing. Like they've done this for almost 40 years, 35 plus years, yeah. and they still get butterflies. It's just crazy. But I won't talk. <laughs> we'll um, yeah, this is this is serious. This is not jaywalking or stopping in a crosswalk this is the four counts of first degree murder and burglary so yeah. she's probably yeah this isn't an everyday thing for her right let's play this okay let's uh let's get on the record please thank you okay we are now on the record in uh, state of idaho versus brian c coburger cr 2922-2803 Mr. Koberger is in the courtroom along with his attorney, uh, Ms. Taylor. I believe also uh, part of the team is uh, Dave Ronson and uh, Elisa Massa, who is participating by Zoom, I believe. Um, the state is represented by Mr. Thompson, Lake Park County Prosecutor's Office, or Prosecuting Attorney. Uh, Ms. Jennings is uh, of that office too, Lake Hutt County Prosecutor's Office. Also uh, part of that team is Ingrid uh, Beatty and Jeff Nye, uh, both from the Idaho uh, Attorney General's Office. I'm John Judge. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a Lake Hutt County District Judge and I'll be presiding over this case. So, Mr. Koberger, uh, you've already heard a lot of uh, uh, what I'm going to tell you at your initial appearance, um, but I'll repeat it to you because it's important, and I want uh, I want to remind you of, of these uh, issues. So I'll uh, briefly cover your rights, the charges against you, and the maximum penalties if you are found guilty or if you plead guilty. So I'm going to start with the rights. You have a constitutional right to have an attorney represent you throughout these proceedings. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, then one is appointed at public expense. Uh, Ms. Taylor and her team have already been appointed, so that's taken care of. You have a right to a speedy and public jury trial where the uh, state would be required to prove every element of each charge against you beyond a reasonable doubt. At that trial, you would have the right to cross-examine the witnesses called against you. That means to see, hear, and question them. To call witnesses to testify for you. And if you choose to, to testify in your own defense. But you're not required to testify because you also have a right of silence. That right is protected under the Idaho and Federal Constitution, so you can remain silent throughout these court proceedings, and that can't be held against you. What you, need to, what you do need to remember, though, is that anything you do say other than to your lawyers could be used against you against you in a later uh, court proceeding. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. You also have a right to, to uh, appeal any final decision of the court. In order to exercise that right, you need to file a notice of appeal within 42 days of that final decision or that uh, right is waived. Also, if you are not a United States citizen, any finding of guilt in this state could have adverse consequences to your legal status. Do you understand these rights? Yes. Any questions about the rights? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. So um, let's go to the uh, indictment. Real quick, I did notice like he took some big gulps during that. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just watching body language. I know people are going to be like, why are you he was taking some big gulps before he was speaking and afterwards like you know is you know and now i'm going to be curious to see what his body language is here as the indictment gets read so let's let's watch through this copy the indictment in front of you look to that yes. camera again thank you 
And you see in the hit heading uh, your name there, is that your correctly spelled uh, complete name? Yes, it is. Is that the correct uh, birth date underneath your name? Yes. Are those the correct last four digits of your social security number? Yes. All right, I'm going to read you uh, the charges on the indictment, starting with count one, burglary, that is a felony under Idaho Code section 18-1401 and 1403. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, state of Idaho, did unlawfully enter a residence located at 1122 King Road, Moscow, with the intent to commit the felony crime of murder. Count two, murder in the first degree. That is a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, look to that camera again. with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. Count three, murder in the first degree, a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Latah County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Kayla Gonzalez, a human being, by stabbing Kayla or Kayla Gonzalez, from which she died. Who would you hear that gasp? Four, murder in the first degree. Did you hear that gasp? More. I did not. I, I did not. I was paying attention to the judge um, repeating Kaylee's name improperly. Yeah, when he repeated it the second time, you heard a gasp from the crowd. Do you want me to rewind a little bit so we can hear that again? Yeah, there's also something else I, I thought of then. Let's listen to this. Sure. I'll go back a little bit. This alleges that you honor about November. Yeah, there's crying. There's crying going on in the courtroom. You can hear it. Hang on. Sorry. Let's go back a little bit more. A human being by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. Count three, murder in the first degree, a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about yeah. November 13, 2022, in Latah County, state of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice or forethought, kill and murder Kayla Gonzalez, a human being, by stabbing Kayla or Kayla Gonzalez, from which she died. Count four. He just, he just nodded. That's a felony. Micro expression. I swear I saw a nod. Let's go back. A human being by stabbing Kayla or Kayla Gonzalez from which she died. Count four, murder in the first degree. That's a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. Alleging that you honor about November 13. 2022 in Lake County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Zaina Pernodal. Excuse me. This is hard. I'm sorry. He's clenching his job yeah. big time. Big time. Uh, and I might misinterpret that. I think it's the baby that that is crying. I think the chat kind of pointed that out. So yeah, it could be some gas. Yeah. It could be some crying. I know the baby was there. Um, it's pretty fucking emotional. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just occurred to me. 
his body language. I mean, I saw a subtle nod. Did you see that subtle nod? A little bit. And I did see um, when he started reading uh, Maddie's name, he was kind of moving a little bit. And again, we're just, listen, we're picking this stuff apart. We could be totally wrong. We're just speculating we're, what we see. But he is constantly clenching his jaw. We do see that. Um, and again, Chosen said he might be replaying this in his mind. I'm... <sighs> Something I thought of, what if what if the judge is mispronouncing names to get a reaction from him? Could be. I don't know. Uh, what did I say to you today? I said, <sighs> Thank you. maybe this guy... And again, I, I'm allegedly, you know, I'm just making a speculation here. I'm not saying this is any hardcore evidence to this. So I'm going to be very careful what I say. I said to you, I, I'm trying to remember what I said. I said, maybe this guy wants to go all the way with this because at this point, you know, it may be a situation where there's nothing to live for anymore. So I've already done what I've needed to do. I've already proved my point. I've already have gotten back to the world. It's kind of like a, I said, like a mass shooter type yeah. of situation where you had, what was the guy, the Parkland shooter that just went through this whole big trial. His name does not deserve to be mentioned. Right. He went through this whole big trial. He had nothing to lose. We had to listen to this crap in the courtroom, you know, that, 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 uh, that, you know, the stuff that he was spewing and doing. Um, and um, maybe this is one of those type of situations. If And think about this. If this was a handgun that was used, this would be kind of a mass shooting situation, correct? Am I wrong in saying that? Potentially, yes. Um, I've so seen it compared to that. His weapon, allegedly, was this knife. Um Ooh, it's emotional, I'll tell you. All right, let's keep playing through here. Dana Cronodo, a human being, by stabbing Dana Cronodo, from which she died. Count five, murder in the first degree. This is a felony under Idaho Code Section 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. This alleges that you, on or about November 13, 2022, in Lake Talk County, State of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation, and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Ethan Chapin, a human being, by stabbing Ethan Chapin, from which he died. This is signed on May 16, 2023, by the presiding grand jury. So Vicky's saying that we're sounding very biased. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Vicky, flat out. And I think we've been very transparent on how we feel about in this case. I think you can get the vibe as to where we stand in this case, what, what we think is in this case. But again, I've always expressed that Brian Koberger right now is innocent until proven guilty. Just because I lean to the side of guilt doesn't mean that I'm biased. It's just my opinion. There's plenty of people in here that don't agree with us. Believe me, there's a lot more people in this chat that don't agree with us. And Alora also leans to the side of feeling that he's guilty. I, I, I express this to you. If you can, please give us, with the totality of evidence that we have so far that we know about, if any of this is really leaning in his favor. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Am I wrong here, Laura? I mean, <clears throat> um, I believe that the evidence that we have seen so far is very strongly against him. But once again, that is what I believe. Um, and I, I do like to hear from those that believe that it's not there for him because let's face it. We're not the jurors. We're not the judge. We're simply just the court of public opinion. Um, looking at the evidence and having a discussion about a true crime case. So everybody we... does this. Everybody does it in their everyday life. When a case comes up, 
you go to your buddy at work and you say, Hey, did you hear about yes. Joe Smith or whatever? What do you think? Here's the evidence. Could it be possible? Do you think so? Yeah, I think it could be. Yeah. It's looking that he's or she is guilty or, Hey, no, he's got to be evident. I mean, that's what we do here on these, these channels. We, we discuss this. Um, I've been very openly how I feel about in this case, mm -hmm. very open, but again, and I've stated this as well a million times in my streams. Brian Koberger is innocent until proven guilty. You know, I, I don't know how much more to explain it. I mean, it's just how I feel. And it's I I guess I can feel that way until I see something that may change my mind. Maybe something comes up in this trial and says he was in Hawaii. He had tickets. He flew over there and they have receipts and shows him that he was sunbathing on a beach over in Hawaii. And then I go, well, you know, what? I was wrong. You know, uh, I, we have receipts now. We have documentation. We have evidence in front of us that says he clearly was not anywhere in this area. He was in Florida or Hawaii or whatever. But and we if, don't know until it gets to trial. If he proves his innocence, then I want to move on to the next <clears throat> suspect. And sure. I, I want the answers. Yeah, we will continue. If if Brian Cobra is innocent in this case, we'll continue to investigate this. 100%. Find things out and try to give us, give our audience here on this channel some uh, some uh, uh, conclusion or possible conclusion to this. So, all right, we'll move on. All right, let's move on. So now I'm going to go to the maximum penalties of each charge, uh, starting with count one, burglary, Minimum of one year, uh, in up to 10 years in imprisonment, fine of up to $50,000 or both fine and imprisonment, restitution for the victim's economic losses resulting from the crime. For counts two, three, four, and five, murder in the first degree, maximum penalties, life in prison, or the death penalty. Fine of up to $50,000 fine and life in prison or the death penalty. Restitution for the victim's economic losses resulting from the crime. Also additional fine of up to $5,000 to be paid directly to the victim's families. If you are found guilty or plead guilty on each charge and the maximum sentences are imposed consecutively, that means one right after the other, you could be facing 10 years in prison, followed by four consecutive life pre uh, sentences <clears throat> or death penalty, fines of up to $200,000 and $20,000. Laura, maybe you can answer this. Uh, so there's been some conversation again about that sheath. And uh, Paula's asking, I'd really like to know where people are getting that they're not using the sheath and the DNA found on it. I haven't seen that in writing anywhere we kind of covered this yet in yesterday's um, stream correct i i'm i'm with you paula i i don't know i i want to see it in writing i want to i don't i did not get that from the documents that they are not using the sheath so i understand how they used it but i don't understand that they're not using that specific evidence um i know what they don't want to use so yeah i need some clear concise something official saying this we're not using this right now it's just everyone talking about it um that's definitely a question that i have for um an attorney that wants to that you know hopefully we can get on here and then low 12 says they're not using the genealogy da i think they're using dna on the sheath Yeah. So, you know, again, in, in um, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, what we've done here over the past four months, we've looked and sorted through the evidence. Uh, again, there's many uh, things that have, you know, given given us the uh, the facts that we see in front of us to make our determination. And, and listen, a lot of people, um, a lot of people won't agree with us. But I urge everybody, and I, I put the documents out there, look through the documents, read through it. Don't base things just off streams and news articles. Read through what they have for evidence. Make your determination off the evidence. It's there. 
you know, news articles and channels will swing one way. And I think that bothers some people too, because I stick to the, the way that I feel and I don't waver. I don't waver. I stick to my own convictions. I stick to my own self. And I think that's what keeps myself real as uh, I'm waiting. And I've said this and I've asked people many times before, you have my email address. If you can give me some facts or give me something that that may be perceivable in a legal document or something that that points um, that, you know, he's not uh, uh, shouldn't be accused in these crimes. I would love to see it because that would be a great topic of conversation. Some receipts, anything, some great topic of conversation on here. So, um, you know, it's just what I perceive. I've looked through the evidence and, and made my determination. I'm sure a lot of people agree in here and a lot of people don't agree. That's cool. It's all good. We're all good in here. Well, it's to be paid directly to the families with any restitution uh, resulting from the crimes. So let me go to this. Your co-host is incorrect. They did, they, they are not using the sheath as noted on the PCA. All right. Well, we'll bring the PCA up and see if we can find that. Your co-host is incorrect. They did, they, they not using the sheath as noted on the PCA. I don't necessarily know if they said they weren't going to use it, but that they may exclude it. Hmm. Yeah. I want to hear this. If anybody wants, uh, I'll do this. I'll just clear this up really quick. Uh, what was it? Was it this stream? How many days ago did we do that DNA? A couple of days ago? Uh, was Saturday, two days ago. Two days ago. All right, let me find that. I think it'd be important to watch that video because that'll kind of clear up how we... Let me go back. Let me find the link on that one. And of course, I can't find it. I have the PCA in front of me. If, if Star, I'm sorry, I. Stargazer? Stargazer wants to let us know what page it's on. Uh, I'm going to try to find the live that we did. What one was it, Laura? The DNA one was Saturday. So that would be three, two days ago. Yes. Two days ago. I got one from three days ago. What the hell, man? Let's see. Six days ago, a day ago. Am I missing one? Am I crazy? Oh, request for DNA. Here it is right here. If anybody wants to watch the stream that we did about the DNA, kind of explain some of that to you. We went through the documents for everybody. There's the link there. But yeah, Stargazer, tell us what page that's on and uh, and we'll look through it. Uh, I'm going to keep playing this. Okay. And we'll wait for Stargazer to give us the page. Mr. do you understand the charge in count one? And if Laura, if you find it, let me know. We'll pull it up. Do the maximum Okay. Do you understand the charge in count two, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count three, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count four, murder in the first degree? Yes. Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Do you understand the charge in count five, murder yes. in the first degree? Do you understand the maximum penalty? Yes. Okay, Ms. Taylor, is Mr. Koberger prepared to plead to these charges? Your Honor, we will be standing silent. And because uh, Mr. Koberger is standing silent, uh, I'm going to enter not guilty pleas on each charge. Now it's one, two, three, four, and five. Now at this juncture, uh, the state has 60 days to give notice of intention to seek the death penalty. And uh, Mr. Koberger has a constitutional and statutory right to a speedy trial. 
So let's start uh, with you, Ms. Taylor, and then. Laura, you want me to let them know what, we're, what we, so far, what we discovered? You looking through the PCA or? Um, I found the sheath mentioned four times, but mm -hmm. I do not see anything saying it's not going to be used. I found DNA mentioned three times. Nothing that it's not going to be used. I'm looking. Yeah, we have the legal documents. So if Stargazer can let us know, I mean, we'll we'll pull it up. I have all of them at my fingertips. So if there's a, a certain document or a page, just tell us the title. We'll go under it and look at it, and uh, we'll pull that up. Uh, Laura's looking through the PCA right now. She can't find it. Um, so so JB saying there's three different versions of the PCA. So, yeah, so which version as well? Yeah, just point it out. I mean, we can pull it up. We have no issue doing that before going off live. If someone just give me something, I'll pull it up where it says they're not going to use the sheath DNA because I've read through the documents a bunch of times. I haven't seen it. So, um, yeah, Paul is saying it's not there. So we'll, we'll wait. I'm going to play through another. We got about another five minutes. You know, we're going to wrap this up probably in about nine minutes. But if anybody can get that over to us in the next nine minutes, I'll play. I'll pull it up. And I, I haven't seen it. So maybe I, I might have missed it somewhere. But, um, yeah, we'll keep playing through this. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, uh, to discuss uh, scheduling. Oh. Your Honor, we'd ask the court to set this trial ah. at the very outside of the speedy trial, right? I'm going to go We're back. not prepared to do anything. Uh, with you, Ms. Taylor, and then Mr. Thompson uh, to discuss uh, scheduling. Uh, schedule. Your Honor, we'd ask the court to set this trial at the very outside of the speedy trial, right? We're not prepared to do anything but ask the court to do that today. Okay. Can we count it out? How that will be? Remember? My best guess is it would take at least four weeks, maybe six. So you'd like me to set this for a six-week trial? At this point, I would not. So, Mr. Thompson, what's your... <laughs> Those trial dates are workable for the state judge. Thank you. Second, we're starting. Okay, for six weeks. Yes, sir. Anything else we need to address today, Ms. Taylor? Not with regards to the press, I am not. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, Nothing's going to say at this time, y'all. So um, with that, um, 
By the way, I do want to let everybody know, if they don't already know this, uh, that once the grand jury issued the indictment, a uh, preliminary hearing scheduled to start on June 26th was no longer needed and was vacated. So some people are confused about that. Uh, so I thank, uh, thank council uh, and, I, uh, and the media and the public for your attention and respect. So uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. And that's it. That's where we're at. Yes. That's where we're at. Well, I'm not going to do the um, gag order. Probably going to do that tomorrow because it's, it's about an, you know, we did about an hour and a half here tonight. I didn't want to keep you even that long. So I appreciate you. Yes. Hanging no out problem. Being a great co-host. And uh, thank you again. I think this is going to bring up a lot of emotion in people. I'm seeing the chat. It's a lot of people that agree that, you know, he, he could possibly be the person that did this. It's a lot of people that disagree and think that he's completely innocent. I think that's what keeps it a very healthy chat. Um, we're very respectful in here as well. And um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. And maybe as this evidence gets sorted out, you know, maybe it's it's gets to be too much. And there could be a plea or... They just say, screw it. Let's roll the dice and go to trial and see what happens. Um, I think it's going to be extremely long, complicated case. I think there's going to be many twisted turns. I think you're going to hear a lot about. Um, we're going to hear, obviously, a lot about Brian Koberger. We're going to hear a lot about the individuals that were that were killed. Uh, probably not some nice things that we want to hear or see. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, it's too bad that we're going to have to learn about these victims that way. And it's too bad that we have to learn about these victims in this way. Um, and again, you know, these, these kids didn't ask for this. They didn't know this was coming. And um, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for everybody. It's unfortunate for the, you know, the friends, the family, the community. Um, I don't know. I guess yeah. that's all I really have to say. So yeah. On to the trial. I want to thank everybody this evening for hanging out with us for this last hour and a half. And the poll up here, we got really quick, real quick. Come on, poll results. I want to get off air. <laughs> Let's see. It's not going to post. It's being stubborn. I think it was like at 19% plea bargain, 80. All right, here we go. Go to trial, 84% plea bargain, 15%, 96 votes complete. Pretty good. We have about 100 people in here tonight. Listen, want to get over um, tomorrow. I'm going to do the 5,000 celebration stream. I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I'm certainly going to give a prize away, and I think I'm going to give a pretty damn good prize away. So you're not going to want to miss that uh, stream tomorrow. It's going to be a nice prize. I'm going to drop the link for that. That's going to be tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll figure out something to do. Maybe we'll watch the, the gag order video and see if any new coverage in the media uh, comes out. I'm sure it will be. There's going to be a litany and a plethora of uh, material over these next, what, four months? Yes. Months? Yes. Um, so I want to thank everybody in the chat. I want to thank all my mods, my channel members. <laughs> the people that come to agree the people that come to disagree thank you for all being here we enjoy all that friendly banter and back and forth um you know sometimes we take maybe some of the comments a little personal because this is such a a heartfelt case and uh laura and myself and a lot of the people in this chat that help behind the scenes have put a lot of work into this case and uh you know listen we all work full-time jobs and then come home and give our time and dedication to this and and if you are the first time watching over the channel tonight, you know, we keep it to the facts. We stick to the, the information that's given out there. and We make a determinations off that. So if you enjoy this type of com content, subscribe and come join us again on the next streams 
But for myself and Laura, uh, thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys on the next stream. Thanks so much. Have a good night and be safe. Bye. Good night. Oh, 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 oh,